This message was originally shared with the Vine Church in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. It was shared via Zoom conference on Sunday, November 29th, 2020. This morning's message is going to serve two purposes. One, it's going to wrap up our missions and evangelism series. We've had a great time focusing on missions and outreach for the month of November. And then secondly, it's going to springboard us into the Advent season, since today is the first Sunday of Advent, and we're looking forward to Christmas. And our text for today does just that. It reminds us of why we need to share the gospel, and it reminds us of who the gospel is all about. And so today, we're going to talk about the name above all names. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, records the message of the angel to Joseph, the carpenter of Nazareth. And the angel said, and she, that is Mary, will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Yes, the name above all names. What is in a name? Did you know that every name has a meaning? Every name among us has some sort of significance. Whether we know it or not, our names all go back to some fundamental quality or a description of character. For instance, when I think about my family, uh, my oldest daughter, Rachel, her name means God's lamb. Uh, the name Sarah, our uh, second daughter, uh, her name means princess. And my wife, Pam, or Pamela, her name means sweet honey. So actually, when I call her honey, I'm actually calling her <laughs> by her name. Now, my name, well, I don't know if I was aptly named because the name Paul means small. And I, if you know me, I'm not a small person. I'm not small, but I am Paul. In Bible times, names were extremely significant. A person's name was more than just a, a tag or a title. It was a description. The Jewish people were particular in the way that they named their children, in the way that they named uh, their offspring. A person's name was meant to be a message to be read by others. In the Bible, there are over 250 names or titles that are ascribed to the Lord Jesus Christ. These are names that describe his nature and his character. And here are some of them that are arranged alphabetically. He is, his name is Advocate, Almighty, Alpha and Omega, Amen, Apostle of our profession, Arm of the Lord, Author and Finisher of our faith, Author of eternal salvation, Beginning of creation, Beloved Son, Blessed and only potentate, Branch, Bread of life, Captain of our salvation, Chief Shepherd, Christ, Consolation of Israel, Cornerstone, Counselor, Creator, Dayspring, deliverer, desired of all nations, the door. He is elect of God, everlasting father, faithful witness, first and last, first begotten, forerunner. His name is glory of the Lord, God, God blessed, good shepherd, governor, great high priest. He is head of the church, heir of all things, holy child, holy one, holy one of God, holy one of Israel, horn of salvation. I am image of God, Emmanuel, Jehovah, judge of Israel, just one. He is king, king of the ages, king of the Jews, king of kings, king of saints, lawgiver, lamb, lamb of God, leader, light, light of the world, line of Judah, Lord, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, Lord our righteousness. He is called man of sorrows, mediator, messenger of the covenant, Messiah, mighty God, mighty one, morning star. Nazarene, only begotten, our Passover. He is Prince of Peace, Prince of Life, Prophet. He is the Redeemer, Resurrection and Life, Rock, Root of David, Rose of Sharon, Savior, Seed of the Woman, Shepherd and Bishop of our souls, Shiloh, Son of the Blessed, Son of David, Son of God, Son of the Highest, Son of Man, Son of Righteousness. His name is True Light, True Vine, Truth. He is Witness, the Word of God, wonderful. He is Yahweh. He is Zion's hope and Zion's deliverer. Whew, that's just some of them, folks, some of his names or titles. 
And all of these qualities and attributes and all these names and titles are summed up and wrapped up in the very simple name, which is above every name, the glorious name of Jesus. And folks, the name of Jesus says it all. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said to him, you are to call him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. We need to understand that that name was chosen for a purpose. And I want us to take a few moments today to consider that glorious name. I want us to be reminded as to why the name of Jesus is exalted above every name. And, and I want us to understand that what his name signifies to us today. And I believe that his name, the name of Jesus, reminds us of three things. It reminds us of his purpose, his payment, and his power. So let's look at this name that is above all names. His name reminds us of his purpose. Do you know what the name Jesus means? The name Jesus was a Hebrew word, Yeshua. We might say in the English, Joshua. So it, it wasn't um, a unique name. Other people had that name. But the name Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus, literally means salvation. Salvation. So can you imagine this? When, when uh, Jesus was on this earth and people would talk to him, <laughs> he'd say, hello, my name is salvation oh good morning salvation good to see you salvation hey who is that guy you were talking to oh him uh that's salvation <laughs> i mean his name was a constant reminder of man's need for salvation his name said it all it reminded us it reminded people of his purpose and it reminds us of his purpose the very name of jesus reminds us of why he came into this world he came to be a savior. He came to give us salvation. Somebody once sent me a Christmas card that said this, and I was able to find it on the internet. Um, our greatest need, if, if our greatest need had been information, God would have given us an educator. If our greatest need would have been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need would have been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need would have been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, so God sent us a savior. His name, the name Jesus, reminds us of his purpose. He came to save, to save us from our sins. Not only does his name remind us of his purpose, but his name also reminds us of his payment. His payment. You know, the fundamental question that's addressed by all religions is, how does man find redemption? How can man find a place with God? How can we find eternal life and religion answers that question by putting the emphasis on the individual in other words you know just do the best that you can and follow the rules you know that's the way of religion it is person centered uh, it is people centered but the name of jesus reminds us that salvation is not about what we do it's about what God does. And, and Christianity really means to accept his best, accept what he has done and follow him because it says he will save his people from their sins. Jesus is the one who does the saving, not us. Jesus is the source of salvation, not us. And so the bottom line is this, whose name can I trust to get access into heaven? You know, I need a name to get past those pearly gates. And whose name is going to get me that access? Will my name be enough? Will I be able to just show my credentials and get into heaven? Not a chance. You know, my name is mud. My name will not get me access into heaven. I need a stronger name than that. I need a more powerful name than my own name. I remember uh, many years ago, I was in Amarillo, Amarillo, Texas, and a, a friend of mine who actually um, uh, was a sponsor of a hockey team in Amarillo invited me to go to a hockey game. I said, yeah, I'd love to. He said, oh, you, I'll let you meet some of the players because there's several Canadians on the team. 
turns out that there was a guy on their team that just uh, his parents lived just a few blocks from us. But anyway, we're, we're watching this hockey game and he said, would you like to go down to the bottom level and meet some of the players? And I said, sure. And so he said, well, okay, let's go. And so we started to go down to the bottom level, to the rink level uh, to meet some of the players. And he said, just a moment, I got to use the restroom, just go on in. And I started to walk in, but there was a guard uh, at the entrance to the rink. And uh, the guard said, where do you think you're going? And I said, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm coming here to meet some of the players. And he said, well, you, nobody is allowed to there. And just at that moment, my friend Gary, Gary Smith, uh, he popped out and said, hey, it's all right. He's with me. And, and uh, the guard obviously knew him and said, oh, sorry, Gary. Okay, that's fine. And I was allowed access to go in. And, and I had a good time watching the game at, at eye level and meeting some of the players. But it wasn't my name that got in. Uh, it was the name of somebody who was more powerful than me. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. In other words, no one has access to the Father except through me. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul reminds us that Jesus is our access to heaven. And he explains exactly how Jesus did it in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. It says, Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death or to the point of death, even the death of the cross. That's how Jesus did it. That's what Jesus did. So the name of Jesus uh, reminds us of, of the payment that Jesus was willing to make to get us access into heaven. Now, I'm going to finish the rest of that Philippians passage in just a few minutes. But, you know, folks, we need to understand that Jesus gave us access to God by becoming one of us. That's why he was born a human yet without sin. And then he voluntarily went in our place, dying on the cross for us. He became our substitute. I should have been crucified for my sins. You should have been crucified for your sins. But uh, as the saying goes, the son of God became the son of man so that sons of men could become the sons of God. That's only through the payment. Folks, the glorious name, the powerful name that, that, uh, of Jesus reminds us of his purpose and it reminds us of his payment. And then thirdly, the name of Jesus, it reminds us of his power. The angel said he will save his people from their sins. What kind of power is that? You know, during the ministry of Jesus, the hypocritical religious leaders were often offended that Jesus was healing people. And of course, they were even more offended when Jesus said to people, your sins are forgiven. That really drove them crazy i mean they were they wanted to kill jesus when he started forgiving people and uh they responded to to what jesus was saying when he said i forgive you or your sins are forgiven they responded with the question who is this man who even forgives sins who is this man who even forgives sins and see their argument against jesus and, and, and against anybody that would try to forgive sins, was this. It says, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Who can forgive sins but God alone? You know, that's a great question. And they were right. You know, they didn't want to accept Jesus as God. That's why they were angry that he was forgiving sins. But that is a right uh, statement. That's a right question to ask. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And folks, uh, I, I qualify that question with the assertion that Jesus is God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. That's why his name is so great, because he was able to pay for our sin. He had the power to pay for our sins. That's why Jesus could heal. That's why Jesus could forgive sins. Who but God can forgive sins? Well, Jesus is, he was and is 
God. My friends, when you think about it, what name can compare to the name of Jesus? What name could compare? I know there's been a lot of great people to walk this planet. And you know, when we hear the name Shakespeare, we may think of a great writer. When we hear the name Beethoven, we may think of a great composer. When we hear the name Churchill, we may think of a great politician. When we hear the name Renoir, we may think of a great artist. When we hear the name Albert Einstein, we may think of a great intellect. Or when we hear the name Pacquiao, we may think of a great athlete. When we hear the name Billy Graham, we may think of a great preacher. But through the annals of time, no name has come even close to the name of Jesus Christ. When we hear the name of Jesus, we are reminded of a great Savior. We are reminded of his purpose. We're reminded of his payment. And yes, indeed, we are reminded of his power. Let me go back to the rest of the passage that I was reading in Philippians chapter 2. Because it says, therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the power of his name. No name can save. There's no name given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no name like the name of Jesus, the name of purpose, the name of a payment, the name of power, the power to save. You know, in conclusion, uh, I remember hearing this old mission story many years ago. And it was about a, a missionary that was in some tropical island. I can't remember where he was, but he was on some small tropical island and he labored for several years and he only won one of the natives to Christ. He just had one convert, but that convert was very devoted to the Lord. But the man decided, you know, I need to go to other fields. I need to go to some other islands. And so with sadness in his heart, but a, a sense of purpose, he got on board a ship. And, and of course, uh, his convert was there uh, to say goodbye to him. And the convert, with tears rolling down his eyes, said to this missionary, he asked this missionary, can you tell me his name one more time? And the missionary, of course, he was feeling quite dejected and uh, disappointed that his ministry only only resulted in one convert but he said to that one convert he said well his name is jesus and it's the sweetest name i know and as he was boarding the ship that native cried out to him again he said please just tell me the name again and the man said the missionary said his name is jesus and it's the sweetest name i know and so the ship started going out of the harbor started leaving the island and the native was st still there with tears rolling down his eyes. And he called out to the missionary uh, from a distance. Tell me that name one more time. And the missionary said, his name is Jesus. And it's the sweetest name I know. And as the ship was almost out of sight, that native at the top of his lungs was crying out, please, one more time. Give me that name. Tell me that name. And the missionary at the top of his lungs with tears now streaming down his face screamed out his name is jesus and it's the sweetest name i know and that missionary went on to some other islands and he won thousands and thousands of of people to christ in the other islands where he reached out with the gospel message but folks the name of jesus is the sweetest name because it reminds us of the purpose for which he came it reminds us of the payment he was willing to make for us and it reminds us of his power, the power to save. You know, over 2,000 years ago, a baby was born into this world, and the world will never be the same. And though centuries have come and gone, empires and kingdoms have risen and fallen, there is still power in the name of Jesus. As we wrap up our evangelism emphasis, let's remember 
Our only hope is Jesus. Man's only hope is Jesus. And I want to leave these words with you as we as we enter the Advent season. And today is the Sunday of hope. Uh, we emphasize the hope that's found in the message of Christ coming into this world. And so I offer this closing benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. May God bless you.